Good afternoon, folks. KF7IJZ back once again, this time to continue our discussion on the Emergency Solar Power Module version 2. Uh, in my last video, I kind of went over lessons learned from the original lead acid battery version that I created a couple years ago um, that I've done a video on. We've talked about the things that uh, I'm interested in looking at upgrading or replacing. And today, I really want to focus on uh, the specific components that I have already selected um, for version 2 of the box. So let's get started. All right, so as a reminder, um, go over the design features again that I covered in the last video. Um, these design features are the specific uh, components and uh, pieces that I want to implement for this version of the solar power module. First of all, I want to base my battery chemistry off of lithium iron phosphate batteries as opposed to lead acid, primarily from an energy density and weight savings perspective. Um, I want to use a Pelican case of some sort um, to get the real rugged, plastic, durable, um, good handles, good latches, lockable, waterproof, uh, all the benefits that Pelican cases give you. Definitely want to stay with a maximum PowerPoint tracking charge controller, which I had in the previous box, but I want to make sure that the new one um, is going to be um, RF quiet. I also want to make sure that the battery is protected this time um, by including some type of an alarm or low voltage disconnect. Um, you know, another device that just ensures that the load is removed from the battery in the event that the voltage of the battery gets too low. I want to make sure that we have a true state of charge monitor rather than something that just tracks amp hours. So I, I want something that is capable of Coulomb counting um, to measure the performance and, and the true state of charge in a, a percentage. Something that act more as a gas gauge, but something that is also aware of the energy, energy going into and coming out of the battery. And then finally, I want... Um, to include some waterproof or water resistant uh, service sockets for like 12 volt cigarette lighter USB. And uh, also I want to try to figure something out for Anderson power poles. All right, so for the battery pack itself, um, I have chosen GBS cells and these are uh, Chinese manufactured cells, but um, they're sold by an organization in Arizona called Elite Power Solutions. And I, I came across these cells um, through forum posts and some information I found uh, with uh, the electric vehicle market. Um, folks are using these cells to actually build electric um, cars and electric uh, motorcycles or scooters. Um, and the, everything I'd read seemed actually fairly positive. Now, I've chosen uh, the 40 amp hour pack from, <clears throat> from the company simply because, um, you know, it, honestly, it was in the budget that I wanted to spend. Uh, but having received it now, um, number one, the first benefit right off the bat is that this pack weighs um, a little less than 15 pounds versus a uh, little less than 30 pounds for the two uh, 20 amp hour rated AGM batteries I have in the previous box. So we already have cut the weight in half and um, in a lot of ways have actually probably doubled the power because remember... I estimate my, my operating guidelines are if a lead battery is rated at 20 amp hours, I assume I'm only going to get about 10 out of it since um, 12 volts is the 50% state of charge approximately for a lead acid battery. And these days I, I don't take packs down um, below 12 volts. So um, yeah, so immediately there's a, there's a very good weight savings there. Um, this battery pack is rated to operate on the low side from 11.2 volts on to the high side of 14.4. Those are the, the safe operating um, parameters. I will actually be operating it, though, between 14.2 and the high side, which is where my charge controller stops. And uh, I will not be discharging more than 12 volts, um, which actually could give me th many, 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 many thousands of, uh, of cycles. Um, overall, as I mentioned there previously, there's a better Pukert performance. In other words, um, as the rate of discharge and uh, the current increases for discharge for these batteries, um, you're not losing as much capacity as you would through um, in a lead battery. And lead batteries, uh, Pukert co uh, co factor, I think, is 1.25, and lithium are generally considered 1.1. Um, now, granted, there are more delicate management requirements, as I mentioned uh, on the low side, we, we can't let the pack get below 11.2 volts total, but again, I intend on shutting everything off at 12, which should give us some headroom, or I should say floor room. Um, and then also, that we, we got to prevent it from overcharging, which the cell balancers will help do, <clears throat> as well as uh, the charge controller cutting off 14.2. Um, the cell balancers also will kick on when any individual cell gets above 3.55 volts, um, and basically it just turns on a transistor and dumps the extra power uh, as heat, so it's they're, they're top balanced. 
um, and they're they're discrete and each one installs you can see in the picture between uh, the positive and negative terminal of each cell there's nothing intelligent about it there there's there's no communication um, there's no true battery management system uh, they're all just discrete components all right, for the case, um, I have selected a Pelican 1430, which is a, a top-loading Pelican case that comes with the pick-and-pluck foam. Um, what I've been able to do is install the battery with the foam. Um, I've you know pulled out the pieces so it will fit in the middle, and that's nice because it keeps the battery from moving around inside the box um, and gives a little more shock protection. Um, most importantly, this case is waterproof when closed, and uh, again, we're... I, I got some comments from folks that I kept talking about waterproof, and, and really, I'm not trying to create something that's truly waterproof. I'm not going to uh, try to submerge this, you know, and try to go for an IPX rating or anything. I, I really just need it to be able to last in the rain and not get, you know, destroy itself in the event that it does get stuck in the rain. Um, overall, the plastic is a much heavier duty um, plastic. I, I don't know what plastic uh, Pelican uses, and I, I apologize, I should have researched that, but it is definitely just, it's heavier duty, less flexible. Um, and certainly a lot thicker um, than the MTM spud cases. In this particular case, I really liked the vertical orientation of the box. That was a feature um, that I think was unique and something you get with a Pelican 1430 or 1440. And the 1440 is the slightly larger case that has the luggage, um, the collapsible luggage handle in the wheels. As I mentioned, the foam padding um, is adjustable inside so you, you can use the foam padding to hold the battery in place. Um, this case is lockable with some reinforced lock points. Um, probably not something I'm ever going to really be worried about, but it is good to know that if I want to keep people from getting inside to the battery um, and getting hurt, I, I do have a way of keeping them out. The latches on this thing are, <laughs> I mean, they're made of the same um, heavy-duty plastic that the rest of the Pelican case is made from, and so uh, they're quite good. And probably the most important feature of the box I've chosen is that it's orange, a nice bright safety orange, um, which if anything might help uh, cut down on heating in the sun, uh, you know, versus a, a black or maybe a dark green case. The next important component of the overall case, of course, is the actual solar charge controller. And uh, this go around, since um, I had used uh, the Sunsaver line by Morningstar previously, I have discovered a new company out of Massachusetts called Genesun. Genesun makes these really awesome, um, very small, lightweight, maximum power point tracking charge controllers for both lead acid and lithium chemistries. Um, they're quite affordable, too. Now, they don't have all the bells and whistles that... Uh, the Morningstar charge controller has. In other words, I, I can't hook this up to a computer and get any kind of data out of it. But as far as being a compact package that was designed from the get-go to be uh, free of radio frequency interference, I mean, you, you, I, I, I challenge anyone to find me a better product. And uh, the company has been wonderful uh, to work with as well. So uh, again, the most important feature, first of all, is that it is maximum power point tracking. Um, the model I've chosen, which is the GV10LI, which is their lithium um, algorithm version. And actually, I should point out, they make different lithium algorithm versions. If you were using like a traditional um, like Li Poly uh, setup, where each cell is, you're aiming for 3.7 volts instead of lithium iron phosphate, they have, um, they have uh, charge controllers that'll work for those too. So when, when you purchase this, you actually select... Um, what kind of lithium battery you're going to do. They also make one for a three cell um, set instead of a four cell. So this is, uh, again, the GV10 Li, uh, rated for a maximum of 10 amps of charging current. Uh, it is absolutely radio frequency interference free, uh, which is wonderful. Again, it's small, um, compact, fits in the Pelican case quite well. Um, it'll take the batteries up to a maximum charge of 14.2 volts, which is just slightly lower than the 14.4, um, as indicated by Elite Power Systems. And uh, the input will handle up to 34 volts, which is um, kind of a nice feature. This isn't just for a 12-volt system. If you want to put your, your panels together um, in series and get the voltage up instead of just have them parallel because you're, you have uh, a lower gauge cable or maybe you have a longer run, um, you know, it's nice to know that this can easily work with 24 volt systems. So this time around for battery or I should say battery monitoring, um, I'm not using uh, a West Mountain Radio power check. I'm not using any WhatsApp meter. I'm, I'm using something that actually comes from a European solar company called Victron Energy. Um, 
and they're, uh, they're, I think their presence in the United States is getting bigger and bigger, and they, they really have an entire line of solar-powered stuff, from marine applications, small applications, to whole home um, grid tie and battery bank setups. But um, they're, they're a company I, I, I was made aware of because of uh, MJ Lorton, and uh, he had a lot of Victron Energy uh, equipment in his solar stuff in his videos. But um, w for this purpose, I was really... I was considering two different monitors, one of which was made by Xantrex. Um, it was called the Link Lite, and I was comparing it to this. This actually has several more features than the Link Lite, um, but probably the most important thing is that the um, the current draw on this was four milliamps, um, ignoring with the relay not energized. Uh, whereas I think it was seven or eleven um, for the Link Lite, and that was really ultimately the thing that sold me. Plus, as it turns out. Um, the Victron Energy BMV 702 has a lot more features and is about 50, 60 bucks cheaper. Um, there's also a BMV 700, which has all the same monitoring features, but it just doesn't allow you to monitor a second bank or do temperature um, or do mid voltage um, monitoring. But <clears throat> you know, this meter is wonderful because it's uh, configurable for any battery chemistry that you know. Um, the top full charge voltage, the um, Pukert coefficient, and then the rough uh, estimation of the charging efficiency. Um, it tracks the state of charge through Coulomb counting, so it, it gives you the state of charge of the battery regardless of if you're pulling from it or putting energy back into it, or those two things are happening simultaneously, um, which I think is really important. It'll give you real-time voltage of um, sorry, real-time reading of voltage, current, um, amp hours, and wattage. Um, you know, just basic stats. And then it also tracks a lot of this data historically. And I, that's something I won't know really a lot about until I get it hooked up. Um, but to that point, there is a USB cable available for this. So you can use it to get um, performance data out, which is, uh, as you guys know, something that I, I really like. Um, and then again, this one in particular has the ability to track, um, say, a primary bank and then a backup battery. Uh, like in a marine application, you might have your... Uh, shipboard power and then have a starter battery you want to um, track um, or it can do a bank and temperature which I actually I, I picked up the temperature sensor don't know if I'll end up using it but it was cheap enough that it's nice to just have this guy also has um, a relay uh, circuit built into it that um, you can set to open or close based on a bunch of different parameters of, of things that it measures and it also has an alarm um, say so for instance if I wanted an audible alarm to go off um, when the low, the voltage on the primary bank has reached 12 volts at the battery, I can have it start sending an alarm and, and blinking and, and doing lots of things to alert. So uh, those, those are some really uh, outstanding features. Finally, the low voltage disconnect. Um, I actually haven't made a decision on what item I'm gonna go with. I, I've discovered three. Um, I have pictured here two. One's made by PowerWorks. Um, the other one is, I, I've never heard of the brand before, but it was one um, that one of my viewers turned me on to available from Amazon. It's the cheapest, but it has uh, all the features I need. Um, and again, this thing is basically just an active monitor that will disconnect the load from the battery once the battery has reached a certain voltage. Um, it, uh, In doing so, it, it, it's protecting the battery from permanent damage due to over discharging uh, and then most of them have the ability that one, it, you know it'll continue to monitor voltage and as the battery charges it'll reconnect the load at a certain point now um, the three different ones I'm looking at uh, the third one being from Blue Sea which is a, a marine system the, the, the differences really are how much current they can handle um, how customizable they are you know can you set the disconnect voltage and the reconnect voltage um, you know, are they waterproof? There's, there's a lot of little things and this is, it's relatively expensive for what it is because the cheapest one is 60. The most expensive one is uh, 90. Um, but you know, again, it, it, it's ultimately, this is insurance in protecting your investment. And, um, I have a feeling that I'll probably wind up with all three and then ultimately pick the one, uh, that I think is the best. The, the one by Blue Sea has an interesting feature that, um, you know, it's configurable, to set the disconnect point, but, um, both it and the, um, the, I think the PowerWorks one have kind of an emergency override that if you need a little bit more energy, even if you're in a low voltage state, um, you can press a button and get it to, uh, basically continue operating for a little bit before it, it kicks back off. 
so in part three in uh, this video, which will be the final video, I'll actually go into the construction and assembly of the final box so you can you can kind of see it all come together. Um, I look forward to hopefully finishing this, of course, before summer goes, um, although the late summer, early fall is really my best time or my favorite time rather to be outside operating. So, um, you know, some friends of mine and I uh, are, are kind of talking right now about putting together maybe a weekend camping trip um, up in the Shenandoahs or something to, um, you know, to kind of test some of the stuff out, kind of have another another uh, late summer, early fall field day. But as always, thank you for watching. Comments below. Please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions or if you think I've missed something and that you maybe um, there's a better idea. I'm, I'm always open to that because uh, my goal is, is to release this kind of as an open design and let other people take it and run with it. Um, and certainly if there are better ways of doing things, I'm all ears. As always, thanks again for watching. This is KF7IJZ.